So the market is finally coming down and I'm starting to see some opportunities here in the stock market. I normally tend to keep a watch list of my favorite stocks that I would love to buy at the right price. So in this video, I decided to share three stocks, one of my favorites that I would love to buy at a specific price. I'm gonna tell you all the details here in the video. I'm gonna try to keep it as short as possible. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. You're gonna find this helpful. But before I get into the three stocks, all of them are are pretty much a little bit expensive this is some kind of a stock that you always looked at and you might believe that no this is expensive but it just keeps getting more expensive it keeps going higher and these kind of stocks are the stocks that i want to buy in a market correction or a market reversal because i believe the biggest mistake that a lot of investors make is something like in march 2020 and i made the same mistake in previous market crashes is we tend to look of how we can maximize our gains in the short term for example in march 2020 i was buying oil stocks instead of buying stocks that I want to hold for the next 10 to 15 years. I was thinking how can I make the most amount of money in the short term instead of looking for longer term investments that I can get a low cost basis on and get a higher CAGR for the next 10, 15 or 20 years. So a lot of those stocks you're going to see in this video they look a little bit expensive but these are very high quality companies that only go on sale every few years. You're always going to find a cigar butt investment. You're always going to find a stock with high that but you're not always going to find a high quality company trading at a discount now the first one which i believe is actually you know trading at some kind of a discount or a little bit on fair value is visa stock ticker symbol v v is one of i mean it's one of my favorite companies this is another stock i always wanted to own it but i always thought that it's just too expensive and i was wrong the way i was valuing it then later on i learned how to value you know quality stocks and growth stocks which is very different from valuing a cigar butt investment or or value stocks and many others so visa is a very high quality company the company i mean the multiple got too extended so the stock has been flat for two years it has been flat since 2021 you know uh, pretty amazing you look at visa it needs no introduction i mean over 52 percent market share in credit cards as of 2021 you have 23 percent which is mastercard 19 percent american express and four percent is discover i believe american express is actually a little bit lower than 19.6 percent but nonetheless visa and mastercard they pretty much own the market i heard a lot of rumors around some kind of government coin and something that's going to take away visa and mastercard i don't believe it's going to happen to this extent maybe some bank transfers but i don't believe you're going to go and be able to buy something with a fat coin instead of a credit card or something crazy so i don't believe the risk is so high for visa and mastercard business model to go away i think they're going to be here for years and years and even you know decades to come now because of visa's amazing business model which is inflation indexed because it just takes a commission of the transaction so if the transaction cost or if the goods increase 20 percent visa is going to get 20 percent more because of the fees without visa having to do anything so it's a pretty amazing business model massive net income margins over 55 percent on average net income margins pretty amazing and this is what you have to keep in mind because if you look at the pe ratio of visa it's trading at 20 four times forward earnings this is where a lot of you can tell me this is expensive it's overpriced but even on a historical average visa is one of the most fairly valued mega cap stocks that i'm personally seeing for the kind of gross potential which i'm going to talk about for the kind of mode of the company 55 percent net income margins like 30 percent return on capital a high you know fast growing dividend at 24 times earnings, this is pretty close to its March 2020 multiple. The mean multiple was 25 earnings. The lowest it was trading at was around 14 times earnings in 2010. And now it's sitting at 24 times and the company is still growing. So in my opinion, Visa here, it's not the most undervalued stock in the world. But it's one of the best fairly valued mega cap stocks that I'm seeing in the stock market i mean if i was a 20-year investor in visa i wouldn't mind starting a position here dollar cost averaging down but the way i think of visa i see the eps has been growing still fast i mean even after visa is such a big company over 400 billion dollar market cap it's still growing eps 70 percent 27 percent because it grows higher whenever inflation is higher this is just beautiful so if you believe inflation is going to be higher visa is going to do very very well trust me 2023 expected 15 and a half percent and for the future is still i mean double digit eps growth even after the huge run that visa had 13 and a half percent 14 you know so, so i 
I would say something like 13 to 14 percent annual if I'm buying Visa at something like the mean multiple of 25 or 24 times earnings. Now, I would personally love to buy Visa closer to 20 times earnings so I can get the 13 14 percent Kaggle from the EPS growth, but I can also get a potential multiple reversion to the mean from 20 or 21 times closer to 25 times, which is the average multiple over the last pretty much 12 or 13 years. So, I would love to buy Visa if it gets back around 22 times earnings you know 22 times earnings or where i would be extremely interested it's actually pretty close it's somewhere around 200 dollars per share this is just a basic chart i'm not an expert technical analyst or anything crazy but if visa gets to 198 200 anywhere below 200 dollars per share i would be extremely interested in owning visa again it looks expensive at 24 times earnings but if you count the massive moat a competitive advantage that Visa has, the 55% net income margin, I mean, pretty amazing. And you look at the EPS, it's still going double digits. I think, you know, something like Visa is somewhat undervalued to fairly valued even at this price but if visa gets to 200 dollars per share or below i would be extremely extremely interested in owning visa now this is another stock that most of you don't even know it exists maybe you've seen the name in some building or some place but a lot of you you don't even know it exists and this is otis elevators which was part of utx and then they spin off carriers they spin off otis otis worldwide is an elevator company i mean they own the elevators or the equipment of the elevators in many popular buildings, I mean, in Dubai and in Egypt and the United States. It's, I mean, I believe it's the largest elevator company in the world. I, I'm pretty sure it is. They have some other competitor, but Otis is one of the largest one. I mean, all around the world. Now, if you look at the uh, company, it's, it's pretty amazing, pretty high quality company. But the biggest problem with Otis is their exposure to China. A pretty decent chunk of the equipment sales go to China. And we know what's happening with Evergrande. We know what's happening to a lot of buildings that have been teared down and just not continued in China, even though China is trying to fix it with a lot of stimulus and stuff. But this is still somewhat of a risk with, you know, something like, uh, you know, Otis. Now, the main reason Otis has such an amazing business model is because they have to install their own equipment. And they are the only ones that can, they can actually work on their own equipment. So whenever the Otis equipments are in place, they have pretty much very long term contracts for Otis to maintain the elevators for the buildings or wherever in hotels and many other places. So they not only get a lot of you know, money from services, but the highest margin revenue over 23.5% is from the services, from maintenance and fixing them and just you know, making sure they run the right way. And Otis has pretty special tools, pretty special stuff. So whenever you have an Otis elevator, you need Otis to fix your elevator. You just cannot go and hire some other company and trying to do whatever. And they're very long-term contracts, very high backlog. It's a pretty amazing business model, pretty boring, recession-proof. People are always going to use elevators. If you have AI or whatever, people still can use elevators. It's pretty amazing. Now, if you look at you know something like the PE ratio on it, it's trading around 21.7 times earnings. Again, this is another one that a lot of you will say it's extremely overvalued, it's extremely expensive i do agree this is why i don't own otis i'm waiting for a much better price i'm going to tell you the price but even at this price i mean it just went public a few years ago the mean multiple is 25 times that was trading at 21 times 0.7 for earnings multiple i don't think it's extremely overvalued as such right i think it's fairly valued but i would personally like it a little bit lower because again this is just pretty fast in the video this is how i'm reviewing these stocks i want to take a lot of your time but the way i think about it is again if the just multiple stays flat from here and Otis continues growing double digits for the future, which is what is expected. They grew double digits before. They expect it to grow even more in the future, something like 11 to 12 percent. So if I can buy Otis cheap enough, maybe 19 or 18 times earnings, and I can get some kind of a multiple expansion, I can secure something like 15 percent CAGR for the next five years, which is a double every five years with a very safe, very high quality company with something like Otis. Pretty amazing stuff for Otis. 
Uh, this is again a basic chart. I'm looking at something around $72, low 70s. If it gets to low 70s, I would be extremely interested in opening a small position in Otis Elevators and potentially dollar cost average down on the company. This is again not a guarantee, so don't just assume that if it got to 72 that I bought it. I always change my mind, I always look at different opportunities and stuff, but I do share everything I do in my own Discord. If you're interested in joining, the link in the description. But it's a very amazing company pretty safe recession proof i mean people still need elevators this is the business model that i love with a, some kind of a margin of safety and a moat so i would love it around 19 to 18 times earnings which would be around 72 to 73 dollars per share i would be extremely extremely interested now the third one which i've never talked about on the channel and i'm also very interested in this company and it's something like moody's mco moody's corporation most of you know what uh, Moody's uh, actually is, but if you don't know, Moody's is a credit credit agency, credit rating agency. Maybe you heard of it in the big short in 2009. They gave the bad ratings to a lot of the bonds and you know the, the mortgage-backed securities and stuff, and you had the whole thing because of Moody's and S&P. They gave the wrong ratings. They did not read the pages and do their own due diligence, and it's just. But this is what happened. And even after 2009, Moody's and S&P and Fitch, they're still doing business. So even financial crisis could not destroy them. This is a very large moat. There's only three players, S&P Global, Moody's, and Fitch, and you have 5%, you know, some other smaller companies that they're pretty much irrelevant. But Moody's has over a 40% market share in a highly regulated industry. Every time any company wants to issue debt, you have to have a rating on the debt, AA, AAA. They also have a lot of other exposure to indices and other kind of data analytics and services. And even now, the ESG rating, they've been making a lot of money on ESG in terms of Moody and S&P. I don't know if this is sustainable for the long term, but they did grow EPS a lot and uh, revenue growth because of the ESG ratings and a lot of companies a lot of government stuff are requiring them you know so they've been benefiting from that stuff now if you look at something like moody's very high net income margins over 30 percent net income margins for the company i mean very wide moat the company is undestructible even 2009 could not break something like moody's but if you look at the multiple it's also richly priced this is pretty much the most overvalued stock of the list i would say the most undervalued one out of those three is visa then otis then moody's and moody's is sitting at 30 times uh, forward earnings the mean multiple is 25 times earnings it's well beyond the multiple although it's a much better company it's growing much much quicker it just has higher margins you know better stuff the market also realized the value which is why it's, it's trading much higher than the historical average but even on the october lows moody's got to something like 25 times earnings which was the mean multiple so it never got extremely undervalued on a historical basis and now it's sitting around 30 times earnings now i would love to buy moody's at least on the mean multiple of 25 times earnings by a small position and dollar cost average down and again to keep the video short moody's even though it's a a very large company it's still growing eps 26 percent you know 21 percent 22 percent 21 percent it declined in 2022 that was in 2021 and, and issues they had a lot of one-time expenses and stuff but it's still expected to grow double digits you know 13 percent 15 percent 17 percent you guys know i like to get doubles every five years which is around 15 percent every single year over doubles average s p return this is the minimum that i look for so for me to get this kind of return with uh, moody's I would have to buy Moody's, I don't know if it's going there, but I would have to buy Moody's around $261 per share. If it gets to $261 per share or something close to that, I would be extremely interested in, owning, in opening a small position around 25 times earnings, which is the mean multiple. And then I always, again, start a small position and I dollar cost average down. This way, I'm happy whenever the stock goes down. I don't get too stressed that I bought it, it went down 10%. Well, okay, now I buy more. I get a, a chance to buy more shares at lower prices i get a discount so i get happy whenever my stock goes down which is why i never go all in in a specific investment i started small and i slowly build it as the stocks go down and this way i'll be happy when it goes down because i can buy more of it at a lower price and this is pretty much the video for today it's something new i haven't done before if you enjoyed it you'd like me to do more of that stuff more often you know let me know thank you for watching the video again it was not financial advice i really hope you enjoyed it so if you did please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing so i hope to see you in another video